the rationale for monitoring and evaluation. Now, in this session, we are going to learn what the rationale for M&A is in project management, and not just in PM, but uh, also in other areas. You know, when we're talking about uh, monitoring and evaluation, you can do M&A on a project, you can do M&A on a program, you can do M&A on a policy, you can do M&A on a, an organization, you can do M&A on a strategic plan, isn't it? So when you talk about the rationale for monitoring and evaluation, we are asking ourselves, what is the, what is the value, what is the importance of a monitoring and evaluation? Now, I know you're taking a, a journey for M&A and uh, you, 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 you want to become a certified monitoring and evaluation professional. And, and by the time we are done with you, uh, you will be a professional, a certified professional in monitoring and evaluation. But then um, we don't want anyone to drop off along the way. And if you want to be very keen on um, M&E, and, and you want to stick around for the five weeks, and you want to uh, grasp the content, you want to take it with the seriousness that it deserves, then you must start with an understanding of why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And not just this course, not just this course. Anything you do in life, if you want to stick with it up to the end, you must have a very strong and convincing why. When I, when I was thinking about uh, starting my PhD, uh, someone came and, uh, and told me the same thing. Told me, Benson, if you want to stick <laughs> this journey up to the end, you must have a very, very strong and convincing why. If you set your why correctly, then you'll do it and you'll finish it, <laughs> okay? So I don't know what is you, your why for, uh, for, for monitoring and evaluation. In fact, it's a book I'm going to recommend. Um, I don't know where that book is, eh? yeah, it's here. I, I'm going to recommend this book. It's called uh, Start With Why. Always. Every time you're doing something, start with why. I want you to write down now. And that's, that's what this book says. Uh, what is that very, very strong why that is leading you to do a uh, monitoring and evaluation? One of my best classes uh, so far in terms of class attendance and participation, uh, the, 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 the immediate last class that uh, I taught for February, I think we were a total of 33. And uh, every, every lesson, we were either just missing only one because from the word go, we decided we are not starting this until we define our why. And this is the same thing I want us to do with this team, because I know you're starting this journey. I want you to define your why with regard to monitoring and evaluation. And you will see that you're going to follow this to the end. You're going to become a professional in monitoring and evaluation, and you're going to. Um, you're going to achieve incredible success in uh, monitoring and evaluation. Now, um, let, me, let, me, let me engage us for a minute uh, before we even start. Uh, and, and I know the reason as to why you have registered. I know most of you have registered. Um, the reason as to why you have registered is probably because you know and you understand your why. But, but let me just uh, engage uh, someone here. Um, let me engage Matthew. 
Matthew Matacho, good evening. Matthew. Uh, Matthew, can you hear me? <clears throat> I can't seem to hear Matthew. Yes, I can hear you. Ah, that's Moses. Is that Moses? Yes. Moses Matthew, right? Ah, okay. Yes, Moses. How are you, Moses? I'm all right. I'm doing fine. How are you? Good, good, good. Where are you joining us from? I'm joining you from Juba, South Sudan. Now, <laughs> Moses, there's something I want you to assist me with. Eh? All right. Um. The other day, I was talking to a CEO, a friend of mine, and um, I was talking to him about monitoring and evaluation. And, and he told me, Benson, for me, I don't believe in your money. Um, and, and he told me, uh, imagine, Benson, uh, you are you're a donor. You give me money. He, he runs a very big organization. He says, Benson, I want you to imagine that you give me money to build a tank for the community. And then I take that money, I build that tank for the community. Why would you as the donor expect me to spend more money monitoring and evaluating that tank? And you can see it. So what is the need for money? Now, Moses, how would you respond to such a person? Like, he, he doesn't see the need. It, we have built a tank, it's there. So why spend more money and time monitoring and evaluating the tank? What, what do you think, Moses? Right, this question, it seems a bit psychological and very tricky at the same time. Uh -huh. But, uh, uh, being M1A specialist, maybe let me just say like that. Mm -hmm. So the need for M1A right now in this place is that one, we need to keep the track of the money that we have already given up out. And then we need to see how the money is being used, the performance of the activity, either it is progressing or it's not progressing. If it is progressing, then that is a good news for the one who is implementing the maybe the job given by the donor or what. If it's not progressing, meaning it is giving you maybe an indicator that you need more effort at least to, to rectify or to find out where could be the problem. After realizing where the problem is, and then it will give you now a way forward on how to solve the problem. So, 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 so what you think, Moses, is that uh, progressing, does it mean that uh, if the height of the tank was here, then tomorrow we find that the height is here, it, that there's progress? Is, is that what you call progress? Or what, uh, what do you mean by progress? Okay, the, the progress I mean here is the tank is built to help mm -hmm. the community. Okay. Now, if this is the case, mm -hmm. There are people living in the community. We need to assess how many people are benefiting from that tank. That's number one. Secondly, mm -hmm. we need to identify mm -hmm. how many male or how many female human beings are using that tank mm -hmm. according to their age category. We need mm -hmm. to see maybe it will depend based on the custom indicators set mm -hmm. by the donor or mm -hmm. by the implementing partner, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need to find out how many from for example, from one year to 10 years are fetching water from that tank or are using that tank. And then from 11 to 20 or from 20 and above, we need to assess how many. Is it helpful to the community? If we find out that the number of the people living within that community is too high and the tank is not helping them, so that one will give a need of planning to construct another tank within that community. Mm -hmm. So this is the need of M1E. Now, this is what I think about it. Yes, uh, and you're very right, and you're very right. Uh, so uh, Abdi, uh, Abdi K, Alas was saying simply, 
did the project meet the intended uh, purpose? Uh, there's someone who is joining us at PC. Uh, I see your hand is up. Maybe you could tell us your name and uh, give us your comment. Uh, someone joining us with the PC. <clears throat> your, your name, uh, please. Thank you, Doctor. My name is Mama Ali. Uh, Ali. I am one of the, one of the scholars uh, in uh, Somalia currently, but uh, from Kenya. Mm. Uh, to my understanding, uh, the objective, to add on what my friend or my colleague has said, mm. also uh, the ME is needed to check uh, the quality of the type of the tank being constructed. The quality? Yeah. Okay. That's what I wanted to add. Thank you. So, so just, just before, before, you, before you go, um, what do you mean by quality? Is, is it, does it mean uh, the, the thickness of the wall or, you know? Yeah, I mean uh, the, the construction of that, uh, you see the, the construction of a tank, mm -hmm. the quality of that construction mm -hmm. needed to be followed up because there is a certain type of tank that you require as a donor. Mm -hmm. So if that one is as by the quality, if it's equivalent for like what you paid was five thousand, mm -hmm. and then if I use like two thousand and construct at least something there, mm -hmm. I mean it needed to check uh, the quality of the construction of that tank, mm -hmm. and second, whether the objective is achieved. Absolutely, absolutely. You're very right. You're very right. Thank you. Omondi, how would you respond to this friend of mine? Okay, uh, what I can say, mm -hmm. um, another indicator could be the impact of the construction of the tank to the surrounding community in that, suppose children and women were, were using a lot of time looking for water. Now, if the tank can help them to get water near and save their the ex extra time to do other things, children to go to school and also women to do other work at home. I think that is also another thing that m and will monitor, the impact. Thank you. Now, um, uh, uh, let, let's assume, Omondi, that uh, we know that uh, women were spending three hours a day uh, going to look for water. Now they only spend 30 minutes. We know that, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yes. So what? Now, what do we do with that knowledge? Does it add value to us? It will add value. Okay, now when we look at it mm -hmm. in terms of the fact that when they spend a lot of time, it means they will also cover longer distance and they will be tired and malnourished, all those things. So the tiredness, now they will have quality life compared with if the tank is not there. That's okay. I don't dispute that. I know the tank is really helping the community. And, 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 and by the way, one of the questions that we are going to be asking ourselves is, do we need M&A &E for us to know that? We need to ask ourselves that. Maybe to know that we may not need M&A, &E, but the extent to which we have reduced the time spent by both women and girls of community to go looking for water. You know, within that context, we need monitoring and evaluation. Yeah. What do we do with that knowledge? We use that knowledge to the design knowledge we have future. Gotten. Yes. Yes, Amande, go ahead. Okay, I'm saying the like for example the data we have collected in the field, mm -hmm. we can use it to do calculations which can tell us that the numbers reduced by this percentage, and because of that percentage, now children are spending this number of hours in school, mm -hmm. and it's helping them maybe to increase in their performance. And by so doing, in the next five years, the community shall have. Uh, shall have gained more in education and also women are also spending the remaining time maybe planting crops. 
Absolutely. And, and, and of course, that information and that knowledge is very, very important, both in terms of managing the current project, but also if we go to another area and we want a similar intervention or we, we find similar problems uh, faced by the, 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 the community, we now know that this kind of an intervention actually works. So monitoring and evaluation appreciates the fact that we did not build the tank as an end in itself, but we built it as a means to an end, okay? So that we need to find out to what extent is this means, which is the tank, achieving the end, which is provision of water. Because it is possible for you to build a tank, but then it just remains there as decoration, okay? And, and, and the donor will come and say, oh, so you build a tank, fine, good, good job. But it's there just as a, decoration, it is not actually achieving the objectives which it was built, okay? So, so monitoring and evaluation becomes very, very important and we're going to be uh, looking into that. Great. Now, I, I, there's something I want you to look at here briefly. Um, Now, I want to give a bit of a story concerning uh, this, um, this image here. During the Second World War, the Allies, you know, there were the Allies um, in, in, in Germany, and they were fighting. So the Allies would send bomber planes or planes to go on bombing raids, okay, to the enemies. So they would go and bomb the enemies, the enemy lines, and then they would come back. All right. <clears throat> uh, Just one minute. I need to somebody who is a. Uh... So what used to happen is, when the planes would, after they go to to bomb the enemy and they come back, uh, analysts would assess the damage on the plane because when you go there to bomb enemies, uh, the enemy would shoot would shoot at the planes you know, maybe surface to air or something like that. So when they analyzed the areas that these planes came with a lot of bullet holes, um, this, is the, this is the pattern that they came up with. So most of the planes that were coming back, you know, they had holes on these red areas. Eh? And therefore what they did is that they decided they want to reinforce because these are the areas that are were coming with a lot of bullets. Eh? They wanted to reinforce these areas using the data that they have. Because after all, those are the areas that were most likely to be hit by bullets. So they wanted to put more something just to reinforce. But somebody else came and said, uh, you guys are getting it wrong. In fact, the areas that are not hit are the ones that you should reinforce. You should reinforce here. You should reinforce here. You should reinforce here. You should reinforce here. So, would you reinforce, um, <clears throat> just a minute. Areas in red, areas with bullets, or 
would you reinforce to areas without bullet holes? If you are the advisor of the generals and you analyze the planes that are coming back after a raid and you see the area circled in blue are the ones that are most likely, you know, they're coming with a lot of bullet holes. But the areas covered in, uh, you know, the areas that are circled in red, they don't have any bullet hole. So which area would you reinforce? Uh, let me engage uh, Thomas, Edith, Thomas. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Doc. Yes, now, which, which of these areas would you reinforce so that you ensure that uh, you win the war? Is it the areas that with bullet holes or the areas that don't have bullet holes? Well, if you, if I'm also respond, uh, the areas with bullet holes, mm -hmm. if at all they are to go back for the uh, fight, they will still sustain bullet mm -hmm. holes from these same areas because they are, so you only reinforce the one you circled with red, mm -hmm. because if these ones are damaged, it will bring down this plane. Mm -hmm. That's my idea. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Thank you, Moses. Alexandra, what do you think? Which of these two areas do you reinforce? The ones with bullet holes or the ones that don't have? Wow, thank you, Benson. Mm. Uh, I was still analyzing, and uh, of course, I know no answer is wrong. No answer is wrong. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was thinking probably uh, mm. the ones in red um, strong enough. It shows me, uh, and there's something to borrow from there. Because uh, I wouldn't, I uh, wouldn't just assume that no bullet touched there. Probably there was a bullet that touched, but maybe they bounced back. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, uh, if it is about the material used in that place, um, I could uh, use that to mm -hmm. cover these other areas. Mm -hmm. And then also <laughs> on the other side, I was thinking, uh, if I assume that the ones um, in red that are attacked. It was maybe the positioning of how the plane landed. Probably they, it was directed to the enemy. So mm -hmm. I might assume that the other ones are strong, but they were in a different, in a safe direction. So mm -hmm. I would, um, I would really reinforce. I would still reinforce. Um, I would, uh, I would reinforce. Uh, would reinforce the the red parts that are attacked, mm -hmm. and um, borrow from why. I think I would look at the material, something that has been used here and yeah, and make that stronger. But still yeah. I would go back not thinking, oh, I'm, I'm very safe. And I think there will be still room for more uh, re like analysis after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tricky one. <laughs> so I'll <laughs> just pause there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, I and, 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 and all of you are right. And we usually say we, we do not have a wrong answers and very and, and, uh, right. There is something called survivorship bias. Survivorship bias. You know, um, when some people were saying that we should uh, reinforce the areas that are hit with bullets, a mathematician came and said we should actually reinforce the areas that have not been hit with the bullets. Because you see, the first thing that you need to notice is we are only analyzing the planes that actually came back. There are so many planes that did not come back. They crashed in the enemy territory. They crashed in the sea. 
And therefore, what means is that if a plane is hit in these red areas, in these areas that have red dots, it will still come back. But if that plane is hit in these other areas that do not have the areas that are circled in red, those are very critical areas. For example, if you shoot an airplane's engine, there is no way that airplane is going back to the base or the cockpit or maybe the fuel tank. And therefore, we reinforce the areas that did not come back with bullet holes. Okay? And what we are saying is that, yes, you can have data, but within the context of monitoring and evaluation, the how you interpret that data also matters a lot. In fact, one of the things that we are going to be saying is that the data that is not available is as important as the data that is actually available. Okay? Very, very important. So let's look at some of the purposes uh, of monitoring and evaluation so that we can see why is monitoring and evaluation so important if you are told to justify why M&A &E is critical. One of the things that you should say is that M&A &E is going to help you identify the bottlenecks or constraints that hinder a project in achieving its objectives and enabling corrective actions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is one thing to fail. It is something that is completely different or something that is, you know, uh, it's something else to not know why you actually failed. If you fail and you know why you failed, then you're also badly off. A story is told of um, the CEO of Nokia. You know Nokia, 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 that mobile phone manufacturer. When Nokia was going down, because at some point Nokia was, you know, had hit rock bottom, the CEO was quoted saying that we did everything right, but somehow we still failed. And, 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 and looking at that statement, I'm like, um, if I were to pick somebody to turn around Nokia, you would definitely not be in the list. Because saying that you did everything right, but you failed, what that tells me is that you do not know why you failed. You don't know. And that's very dangerous. Okay? But if you tell me that, yes, I failed, but I know exactly what led to my failure, then I can entrust you with turning around that project or turning around that plan or turning around whatever it is. So monitoring and evaluation um, does not just tell us about bottlenecks and, 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 and constraints, okay? It allows us to know why exactly we failed or why we are likely to fail. One of the things that we are going to be looking at in the uh, M&A reporting, because that's one of the topics that we are going to give a lot of emphasis. M&A reporting is something called, uh, once, you, once you report on the figures and on the results, there is something called uh, program notes. And program notes, these are contextual issues. You're giving the context within which these results should be interpreted. So that if somebody reads those results, they know that there, there is something behind. If, if we were supposed to achieve 100 and we achieved 70, there is a why behind that, okay? And of course, after that, you, you come up with things like implications for the program, implications for the target beneficiaries, and of course, recommendations uh, going forward. So it is very, very important. With m &E, we are able to identify the constraints uh, or bottlenecks that hinder our project in achieving its objectives and enabling uh, corrective action. Number two, 
m and &E enables project planners and implementers to assess the benefits and costs that accrue to the intended direct and indirect beneficiaries of the project. And that is in terms of accountability. Um, you know, when we do, we, we implement a project, we, we are likely to just give the positive side. We are likely to say, oh, this tank, remember the tank that I gave an example with? This tank is amazing. It's, you know, communities can now have the water and those kind of things. But, but really, the, the, the thing is, do we really know how much of a benefit, the extent to which the community is benefiting? We can, we can praise the tank, but it only reduced, a, it is very expensive, but only reduced the time that women and children and, and, and girls spend by 10 minutes. So they still use, they still queue there. You know, you know, you know, you can have a tank and women were working for two hours to go get water, but now they are queuing for three hours to get water from that tank. And sometimes you start seeing women, they, they, are, they are even more, they even want to go to the river and, and leave the tank there. But you, you are praising the tank to the donor saying, we built a 10,000 liter capacity tank. And money will not allow us to do that. We will know exactly, exactly how this tank is helping us. Okay. Sometimes that project can have more costs than benefits in the community. You can, you can come up with a project that causes more conflict. People are conflicting and people start fighting. All right. And you realize that that project is bringing in more negative than positive in in uh, in the community the other day i was training a, a team um from, from um, an ngo so this ngo does a, a the, the aim of the ngo is to reduce poverty by providing credit or microfinance to farmers and other people and businessmen and women and I was asking them, are you sure, are you really sure that your intervention is bringing more good than harm? Is it possible that by introducing credit in this community, you are not creating over-dependence on credit? Are you sure? Okay. Are you sure you're not bringing what is called debt trap, where people are so reliant on debt that if you remove the, the debt, if you remove the credit, then they go bankrupt. And I gave them a story of uh, farmers in India who are committing suicide because of being in a debt trap. They are so indebted that they think the best way is to commit suicide. It's, it's in, you, you can check it, it's, on the, it's online. So I was telling this team, uh, and, and I was training this organization, and I was telling them, we must have a very candid conversation on the real impact of our project on the people we are serving. So that if we see that it is not adding value, then we look for something else. I don't know whether you guys have watched, uh, there's a movie, it's a comedy movie, uh, maybe you should watch. Um, it's called uh, The Gods Must Be Crazy. I used to watch it when I was young. The Gods Must Be Crazy. 
And um, this is a very peaceful village um, that has some elders in the middle of Kalhari Desert. And then, um, you know, and the culture here is that nobody owns anything. Like everything is communal. You know, there's no that sense of ownership. Like, you know, people share everything. It, if you need it, you take it. And then one day somebody is flying above the, uh, the village in an airplane and throws a bottle out of the airplane window and it falls on this village. And now these villagers find the bottle and they start finding use for the bottle. They find that it can even uh, break some fruits. It can even make some music. And now people start wanting to own it and everyone wants it and everyone wants it and it starts causing conflict and it starts causing quarrels. In fact, at some point, somebody picked the bottle and hit the other, the other one with it. And the elders are so worried. This bottle must be a curse from the gods. What did we do to the gods? <laughs> so that they brought something that is causing conflict in our village. So one of the elders picked the bottles and took on a journey to the end of the world to go and throw the bottle away. And it's an, it's an amazing journey and he goes and he, he, apparently he gets to the end of the world eh? <laughs> and throws the bottle away. And, and, and sometimes you might think this bottle was supposed to be a good thing. It was supposed to be something that was adding value to the village. But the overall result was some, something negative. So with uh, monitoring and evaluation, uh, we are able to identify, is it a net positive or is it a net negative for this particular uh, community? Very, very important. You must identify that as an m &E expert, okay? Then it is also, um, m and &E also helps us in strategic management, okay? It is essential for drawing lessons from the project implementation experience and using the lessons in the planning of other projects. So what we want to do is we, we, we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel, all right? Within the context of project, we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel. We want to learn. If we implemented this project some years back and, and we noticed these are some of the things that affected our project output, when we are implementing this new project, we will implement it with a new knowledge. Okay? We are not going to make the same mistakes that we made uh, last time. Probably we did not um, involve the communities very well. Maybe this time round, and, 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 and we looked at that during our m and &E, uh, process and we realized that we did not involve the community uh, uh, very, very well. And that affected our output. This time round, we want to do uh, things different, okay? One of the things that I was saying, there's a time I was training uh, an organization called the uh, Lutheran World Federation, LWF, uh, and I was training their teams on monitoring and evaluation. Um, they're operating in a, a refugee camp called the Kakuma Refugee Camp. Uh, they're also operating in a, the Dab Refugee Camp. Um, and, and, and they also have a base in, uh, in Kismayu, in Somalia, and of course, Nairobi. So I was training those teams. And I was telling them, for, for, uh, the, the, for example, the ones who are operating in the camps, you have been in this camp for many, many years. You have been implementing projects for many years. Today, you need to be doing your projects in an exceptional manner. Why? Because you have a wealth of knowledge, unless, unless you have not been managing institutional knowledge very well. 
so that you keep repeating the same mistakes. But if you have been managing institutional knowledge very well, today you should be experts. Organizations should be coming to you for advice. So strategic management becomes very, very important within the context of monitoring and evaluation. Now, m and &E also enables us to demonstrate results or impact and document uh, project achievement. Uh, one of the things that I always tell organizations and, and, and I, whenever I'm training them, I tell them, um, we, we do so much, we do so much, but we report so little. I am yet to come uh, across an organization that reports exactly what they're doing. You realize that they are always achieving this much, but they're only recording and reporting this much. Either because they do not know how to harvest impact, or they don't know how to report the harvested impact. A friend of mine from the US um, who runs a school in uh, the central part of Kenya, it's called Daraja Academy. Um, she came and told me, Benson, I'm in trouble. I, I am struggling, I am struggling to demonstrate my impact. So I told her, you know, tell me more about it. She's the director, she's the founder of that uh, uh, NGO. So I told her, tell me about it. And she told me, Benson, we are, we are doing so much, but we are reporting so little. I know that the people who have gone through, the children who have gone through our school have already gotten jobs. They have gone back to their communities. They are already, you know, big people in the community. Okay. They are helping their families. But how do I talk about that? How do I get a structured way of harvesting that and reporting that? Because I know if I were to report on that in a structured way, we would get the we would get double um, the number of partners that we are getting. So with monitoring and evaluation, you are able to demonstrate results and document project achievements. I always tell my resource mobilization, um, I always tell my resource mobilization class, and I know some of you have registered both for resource mobilization and monitoring and evaluation. By the way, we have worked on the timetable. Uh, in such a way that you can do both, um, they're not colliding. And, and I always tell them, the best way or the best strategy to mobilize resources is to perform exceptionally well. But the biggest challenge that many organizations uh, face is that they perform so well, but then they are quiet about it. And I always tell them, whenever you do something good, don't just talk about it, shout about it. In fact, go to the mountaintops and shout about it. Every achievement, don't just talk about, don't whisper about it. Go to the mountaintops and shout about it. And you will see how many more partners you will get. There is a, a UNESCO Institute that came to us and, and they told us, Benson, we are a UNESCO Institute, but, and we are doing so much, but look at our website. You cannot, looking at our website, you cannot know anything about the things that we do. So they wanted us to help them come up with a website that shouts about what they do. Ladies and gentlemen, with monitoring and evaluation, you are able to uh, demonstrate your results, to demonstrate impact, to document project achievements, and shout about them.
very, 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 very important. Okay. So going forward, we are going to be seeing how we are going to uh, to be to be doing that in terms of documenting and shouting about our results. Great. Now, MA is is also very very important in terms of operational management or implementation of the current project. Okay. So MA is important in terms of tracking progress and providing information needed to coordinate the human, financial, and physical resources committed to the project or program. So as we manage the current project, m and &E is very instrumental, very, very instrumental. OK? Because it tells us, uh, yesterday, we used uh, 30 bags of cement. That was more than we had anticipated or we had planned for. If we continue using 30 bags of cement per day, this cement is going to get finished before we complete the project. So today, what measures do we need to put in place to save on the amount of cement that we're using? Emani helps in, in doing that. Okay. In fact, let me say monitoring. We're going to be seeing the difference between monitoring and evaluation. So this is a work of monitoring, really, uh, probably not evaluation. Um, um, I'm a fan of uh, I'm a fan of uh, uh, documentaries, um, and especially engineering documentaries, aircraft, and you know all those kind of things. I, I think in my other life um, I would have been an engineer or something like that. So one of the documentaries that I love watching is called. Um, uh, ultimate airport the ultimate airport so this one episode that they brought sometimes back um they they, they brought uh, they, they were documenting uh dubai international airport and 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 showing us the operations and because it's a very very busy airport very busy it has about 90000 Staff members, 90,000 staff members. So they were showing us how you know it runs. And then one of the episodes, um, they brought um, a situation where part of the runway was to be repaired. You know, they keep repairing the runway. So uh, there's a company that was given some work to scrap off the old tarmac in that runway clean it up, pour new tarmac, and compress it. And they had very strict timelines. They had to be out of that runway in eight hours. Eight hours. In fact, they were told, by the time you're starting to work, there's already an airplane that has taken off somewhere, it's already in the air by the time you're starting, and it is scheduled to come and land on the new runway that you are building. So you cannot extend even by one minute. So this, 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 this uh, company, the project manager, um, in order for them to be able to, know, to check how much time they're spending, they would spend on that project, they did a test run on another part of the Tamak. And because they were so scared about, you know, the timing and that kind of thing and the strictness, they ended up putting too many people on the project area where the tarmac was being done. Okay. So, so there were so many workers on that part. And then the project manager, uh, it was a lady, she, you know, she stood on the side and, and she was looking and she was looking. And she was looking and she said, I think there are too many people there. So she told everyone, everyone, please stop what you're doing and stand where you are. Just stop, stand where you are. Then she told them, anyone who is waiting for somebody else to finish a task so that they can take on the years, Please get out of the project area. Get off, out of the work 
area. And about 50% of the people stepped off. And then now she told the others, now you guys continue working. Okay? And our work started moving faster. You know, things started moving faster, moving faster. Why? Because people were not getting into each other's way. In as much as she did not notice it, she was monitoring the situation. She was monitoring the situation. And she used the monitoring information to make decisions that sped up the work. And, and, and this is what we are saying, that with monitoring, and, 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 and I want to emphasize on the fact that it is monitoring, we are able to track progress and provide information needed to coordinate the human, financial, and physical resources committed to the project or program. And therefore, we cannot win without monitoring and evaluation. Uh, m and &E also helps to provide feedback at various stages of the project, the donors, implementers, and beneficiaries of the project. Again, we are saying feedback is very, very important. Um, uh, for those who are going to be doing a resource mobilization, and I hope all of you are going to combine m and &E with a resource mobilization, and I'm going to be telling them tomorrow because I have a, a resource mobilization class tomorrow. I, I, I always tell them, you see, donors, we, we, we don't call them donors nowadays. Um, we call them resource partners. Okay? We call them resource partners because they're partners. I mean, uh, th there's a way I can take this phone and donate it to you. When I donate this phone to you, I don't care how it is used. I don't care whether you go and donate it to somebody else. But if me, the donor, and you, the implementing partner, we want to solve a particular problem, and your role in this relationship is you're the resource provider. For me, I am the implementer. Then we work together towards solving this problem. So for me as a resource partner, I am interested in the direction that this project is taking. In fact, being a resource partner, you can actually come back to me and tell me, Benson, the money you gave us, um, it wasn't enough. There is something that happened along the way, okay, that spent more money than we had anticipated. Would you be willing to add some more? And because I'm very passionate to see the results, and I'm convinced that, you know, whatever it is that you're saying, it's genuine, I would actually add some more. And that is why we call them resource partners, not simply donors, because they walk the journey with us. And a resource partner, therefore, deserves feedback, requires feedback. And you cannot provide feedback, accurate feedback, if you do not do monitoring and evaluation. And, and I want to give a Another example, uh, so that you see the difference between a donor and a partner. A donor and a partner. You know, because of the uh, because of the improvement in technology, especially medical technology. Uh, today, for a lady, there are some ladies who are telling, who are saying, I'm. I, I don't want to get married. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you you know people like that. I, I don't want to get married, uh, but I want a child. Okay, I want a child. So what do they do? 
they get a donor, isn't it? So if you want a child, you can either get a donor or you can get a partner. Now, a donor doesn't care whether the child is born or where they go to or all those kind of things. But a partner walks with you, walks the journey with you. And that's the biggest difference. For those who try to find, you know, to, 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 to try and see whether you can understand the difference between, in, within the case of resource mobilization, a donor and a partner. Look at that uh, example. So a resource partner needs feedback deserves feedback. Your beneficiaries, they deserve feedback. Why do they deserve feedback? Because you're trying to build ownership for that particular project, isn't it? You're building ownership. If there is ownership, then there is sustainability. If you want to build ownership, then provide feedback, very, very important. And m and &E also helps to support decision-making and understanding of dynamics of project or program being implemented, okay? Now, I want to check in, I want to check in and just confirm that uh, we are still in this journey together. Uh, let me hear, uh, from uh, Naomi, I'm seeing Naomi somewhere. Naomi, good evening. This confirm we are still uh, in this journey together. Naomi. Good evening. Good Hi. evening, Dakshari. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Joining us from where? Uh, joining you from Kenya. Uh, how, which part of Kenya? I'm in Bungoma. Ah, welcome on board. Thank you. Great. Uh, Watson, Chilembo. Watson, I'm seeing Watson somewhere. Yes, good evening, Mr. Benson. Thank How you. are you today? Very fine. I'm glad to join this group today. We are still uh, together in this journey? We'll be together. I've uh, joined today. Ah, great. Welcome on board. You're not late. You're not late. This is actually the first, uh, the first session, anyway. Uh, so you're not late. All right. So, um, so we'll, we'll be done in the next few minutes. Uh, we are almost done. Uh, so we, we are talking about uh, purposes of monitoring and evaluation. Uh, so we're saying that uh, uh, apart from providing feedback, we are able to support decision-making and understanding of the dynamics of the project or program being implemented. Okay. Uh, great. So a few benefits of monitoring and evaluation, very similar to what we've uh, talked about. Um, now, monitoring and evaluation improves the project or program design through feedback provided from baseline, midterm, terminal, and ex post evaluations. If you don't understand this, don't worry. That's why you're here. We, we have... Uh, five weeks with you. <laughs> so you'll understand these things are going to be on your fingertips. Um, but let me, for example, say, uh, say something about baseline. Now, baseline is the, the situation on the ground before we bring in any intervention, okay? Let's assume we want to reduce maternal death. We want to reduce the number of women who are dying while um, giving birth. You cannot start that project without understanding how many are dying now. That data is very important. 
If you do not have that data, then you don't have a project. What are you reducing? Then if you don't have baseline. And by the way, the, the next time we are meeting, um, I will guide you through um, a process of selecting case study projects because you're going to, to select a case study project that you're going to use in uh, developing the m and &E system. And, and, and this is one of the areas that we are going to look at. I will be asking you, what is your baseline? So that you tell me, this is my baseline. Are you increasing that baseline or are you reducing it? If it is, for example, drug abuse, you are reducing drug abuse. If it is average income, you're increasing it. So starting from that point, you're either going up or going down. So, so baseline is very, very important. Midterm, terminal, ex post evaluations, all of them very important. So MA also informs and influences sector and country assistance strategy through analysis of outcomes and impact of interventions and the strengths and weaknesses of their implementation. When we are going to be discussing, I think the next time we are meeting, uh, we'll be discussing one of the things we're going to be discussing is the differences between monitoring and evaluation. And one of the things that we're going to say is that whereas monitoring tracks activities and outputs and identifies problems and proposes solutions, evaluation provides policy guidelines, strategy guidelines. That is what evaluation does. So that you say, uh, if we are, if we want to reduce drug abuse in a certain slum, do we build a police station so that all those who are selling and using drugs can be arrested? Or do we build a rehabilitation center so that addicts can access uh, medical services or can access help? What, what are the advantages of coming up with a police station in order for us to reduce drug abuse? And what are the disadvantages? What are the advantages of a rehabilitation center and disadvantages? So with monitoring and evaluation, we are able to understand that, we are able to assess that, okay? And come up with strengths and weaknesses of each of the implementation. Now, MA provides evidence basis for building consensus between stakeholders. Every project that you're going to be involved in is going to have multiple stakeholders with very different interests. With MA, you are able to bring all of them together because there's something we are going to call OVI. OVI. Objectively verifiable indicator. So that we are saying, regardless of our many interests as different stakeholders, at least there is this one thing that we can all agree on. If the project achieves that, we can agree that that project is moving in the right direction. That is what is called objectively verifiable indicator or OVI or performance indicators. Some people call them key performance indicators. We're going to be seeing the difference. We're going to be seeing the difference between key performance indicators and key results areas and all those things. Uh, it builds knowledge capital by enabling governments or organizations develop a knowledge base of the types of programs and projects that are successful. And abos want to know what works and what does not work and why. I think we've talked about that. We've talked about feedback. Identifies problems early and proposes solutions. We've talked about that. Uh, monitors access to project services uh, and outcomes by target population. I think we talked about that. Uh, evaluate achievement of project uh, objectives. So this is where we usually say this project has achieved 70% of its objectives. And we are very clear, it is, it is not 71 or 69, it's 70. And you can say that with a, a lot of certainty. 
incorporates stakeholder views uh, and promotes participation, ownership, and accountability. There is something that we are going to be looking at towards the end of our training called the uh, participatory monitoring and evaluation. And we're going to be seeing how this you know, brings in participation, ownership, and accountability. Ladies and gentlemen, there is tremendous power in measuring performance. There is tremendous power in measuring performance. If you cannot measure it, as the old adage goes, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. As monitoring and evaluation professionals, we are measurement fanatics. I am a measurement fanatic. I will transform you <laughs> into measurement fanatics. We will measure everything. Monitoring and evaluation, one of the things that I've come to realize, and I think you might have had me say this, it adds a lot of value to your career. But it also adds value to your life. When I did monitoring and evaluation about eight or nine years ago, about eight years ago, there are so many projects that had gotten stuck in my life, including education projects. I was doing a, I think I was doing a, accounting i i was doing uh you know i think i had just i i was stuck with my master's degree so many other things that were stuck you know everything have you, have you ever felt like everything is stuck you started something is stuck you're building a, ho a house it's stuck you're writing a book it's stuck everything is stuck once you do monitoring and evaluation, you start to see things moving, things moving, things moving, okay? You, you plan something and actually achieve it. Actually, nowadays, I'm very scared of some of the plans that usually come here, however big it is, because it ends up becoming a reality. Because I know how to come up with very clear objectives. I know how to be very clear in measuring progress. I am able to anticipate all the things that might hinder my achievement of that objective. For example, one of the things that we have uh, we are planning this year is to ensure that we visit every city in Africa where we have clients. Every so we are coming to your city, every city where we have clients, we, we are we are visiting it before the end of the year. So we we have already anticipated what might go wrong or what might hinder us from achieving that. And, 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 and we are already working on, on possible solutions. Okay? The, the same case with you. What do you want to achieve this year? Are you already anticipating what might hinder that project? Are you already being proactive in coming up with solutions? With monitoring and evaluation, you will find that process very easy and very, very enjoyable. So for the next five weeks, I want us to start a journey, uh, a very interesting and transformative journey of becoming certified monitoring and evaluation professionals. One of the things that you're going to be, you know, to see uh, is how practical we are going to, to get. We are going to roll our sleeves and get our hands dirty. We're going to do things ourselves. If we are talking about a log frame, you're going to develop it yourself. If you're talking about those reports, you're going to develop them yourself, of course, with my guidance. Whatever it is that you, all the tools, you're going to develop them 
yourself. So be ready to roll your sleeves and get into the thick of things. And I'm sure that at the end of the day, is going to be one of the most fulfilling journeys that you have ever taken.